for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, class 101. Still got the jokes like 101. I look at my battles, each one I won. You're full of gas, puff, volovon. Give me any TLA, even ESG. Round up the gangs, he's the key. SG, the savior. Down south, top ESG. Winning government court, the SG. Welcome to my crib, this ain't MTV. Feels five behind, not seven like MTV's watching Bitcoin. Go to an MTV, shows she ain't got an MTV. Regulate all you want, fuck the SEC. Call them dirty south like SEC's here so things don't get messy. See change the drive mode mode s easy as an artist i'm always laying so low flying so low with each blow for blow flow couple horsepower she thinks we're playing polo she sat on my lap gets a present ho ho New colonization, like EZC. The cap capping on X, like he CZ. Make sure they get the message, they BCC. Make things hard for myself, but this EZC. You can't hear Bitcoin, it's inaudible. It always sticks to the script, no audible. Always use logic, only God can judge. All my words placed precisely, like her lipstick smudge. Not black or white, my history, unlike Jackson. From the kingdom that's mostly Anglo-Saxon. Extra large bed, that's where I lay their backs on. When I get to the gates, there'll be horns. Fuck your klaxon. If you want some sats, might need to bid well fuck all your shit coins please get rid sell them right now can't be faster mid tell we're back once again with the master tip well straight fire walton absolutely that yeah that, that was awesome Let's go. Let's <laughs> that was go. totally awesome all right guys that's right welcome back pleb underground weekly episode and joining us today return guest friend to the show tidwell thank you very yeah, much for joining us on pleb underground what's up yeah Thanks for having me back. Awesome. This moment since the last time it's been too long. Love it. Walton, <laughs> yeah, but since, since the last time I've started playing chess against like uh, junior people in your in your company in the in the hopes that one day I might I might beat the the real master. So um, yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was not best pleased. But anyway, great game of strategy. All right, guys. The, the numbers were three two uh, so far, at least uh, in the in the win series. That's Walton uh, up three two. All right. So, uh, but Phil, there are other numbers this week. Uh... That's right. That's right, guys. We're gonna move it over to the numbers. The numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. What do they look like this week, Phil? At the time of this recording, the block height is. What is the block height? 859,111. The Bitcoin fiat exchange 58,692. Big Max per BTC. That's right, guys. We're getting less crappy food for some reason. Anyways, 11,397. Total public lightning capacity, 5,127 Bitcoin. Lightning not dead. Cope harder shitcoiners. Anyways, fastest fee, 9 sats per V-byte. Moscow time, 17.04. Huh. Anyways, guys, those are the numbers. Not really happy about the Big Mac number, but I don't buy Big so Macs. So it, it's amazing. Like I get, I get um, uh, paid by the, the 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 Bitcoin conference, right? And then two days later, two two three days later, the price is pumping. So I'm up like ten percent on that. But then uh, I get paid by Phil, right, for my uh, cut of sponsorship for the show. And then the next day, I get like the price drops like five percent. <laughs> so clearly, clearly, like uh, Phil Phil's dumping on the market right now. Uh, and um, yeah, I don't know. Don't not gonna lie going not gonna lie i was pretty disappointed about that also <laughs> i noticed that as well. like, no, no, wait a second. i know who it is it's mike mike's dumping on everyone right now and uh, uh secretly that's that's what's going on but uh think, yeah we I love you phil, mike really <laughs> i think phil is keeping us at 58k i'm pretty Are sure you, it's you, you think it's no, me it's all, it's I, i'm the bear it's whale 58k haters I'm but we talked whale. about that now i'm not gonna lie i kind of wish i was the bear whale because that's how big Right, I'd be. But... Do you know who the bear whale is? The bear whale is, is fucking bear whale? Peter Schiff. I've been saying this forever. Peter Schiff is Peter like Schiff. the biggest like Bitcoin hater because he's got so much Bitcoin. He's like fudding his bags harder than all of you. Like you're all pussies. Like you need he's to fudge your bags turd. harder. Start be start being more like Peter Schiff. You okay, you know what? First. You know what? You know who's the real bear whale? Michael Dell. Because guess what? He didn't. He wasn't Mister One Hundred. He wasn't stacking any corn on Dell's balance sheet. He's the bear whale. <laughs> he was secretly dumping. What are your thoughts about all this, Tidwell? 
Uh, it's hard to keep up with the memes. I, I've I've learned about the 58k meme stuff last like 24 hours uh, after coming back from Riga. I don't what. I don't know much about it, but what well, you just learned about 58k? Just now, oh. like oh, you need to get you need to get the pin. Oh yeah. No, I know. Uh, I, I I get my news. Uh, <sighs> I'm about a week behind everyone. We need to school you on 58k, I Dan. You need, to, you need to have an intimate behind. conversation with uh, with uh, Dennis Sats. I yeah. thought Atlanta was only five hours behind, not a week, but like you know, hey, th things move slower down here in the south. I'm also down south. It's my excuse. But yeah, Florida is like not, water Florida is not south. Florida's mm -hmm. Florida not the south. I don't know. I feel like Miami's not the south, right? But like Florida <laughs> seems kind of like south. Did you just other me? You're above me. <laughs> you just othered me. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, think about it. You're Florida is not part of the 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 dirty south. It's part of the. Uh, you know, it's part of Florida. It's its own thing. I mean, I'm 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 in Central Florida, so it's not really. You might you might have a slight pass, but when when we think of when we think of the South, we don't think of Florida. There's it's no true. Way. That is that is a good point because when I think of vacation land, I think of Florida. I do not. I and when I think of the South, I do think of places more like Georgia, and you know stuff like that. So. Is Nashville the South? Yes. Nashville seen by the South. Nashville is South. Isn't that weird? Alabama, Carolinas, Tennessee, you could even say Texas, well, you Louisiana. Know. Yeah, Mississippi. So essentially it's everything um uh everything below St. Louis, Missouri? Is that it? Is that the It's just the, it's the cotton belt. Okay. It's pretty crazy. I remember going out to St. Louis, Missouri. That was fun times. Anyways, all right. Okay. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at our numbers. <laughs> I'm just about to get lost. Here we go. Yeah, I know. We're, Welcome we're to, the... to Geography 101, <laughs> Pleb Underground style. <laughs> uh, fun with flags. Let's go. I mean, All this, right. is, this is episode 101, so you're just going to get a bunch of intro stuff to a bunch of stuff, and you already know all of this. So, yeah, welcome to yeah, episode exactly. 101. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, let's dive into it. Let's take a look at our numbers. This is something that people may not know. Our special number for today is 291. And you're thinking, why? All right. This is why our special number is 291. That's right. At CK Dev put out this tweet. Congratulations to minor long number there. Long hexadecimal number for solving the 291st solo block on solo.ckpool.org. That's right, guys. But before you get all excited and start buying your bid axes, 38 petahash, guys. 38 petahash. So I gotta say, I've got an Avalon, got a Bitax, got a Nerd Miner. I've been mining, I've been attempting, right? Playing the lottery for quite a few months now. And I am not this solo miner, and I was not the last solo miner. So. Can we talk but, about Bitax? Yeah, yeah, we can definitely talk about Bitax. What, what would you like to talk about lottery, Bitax? Like, it's really, t like, that's all it is. Like, the numbers are terrible. Like, we, we've been through this before. Like, it's. Yeah. So, so look, right. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Okay. Well, I, I was gonna say uh I didn't know much about Bidax in terms of how it actually was built and where they get their chips from until I talked to uh Scott, uh the guy who's kind of you know behind it. And... I know this. They take an S19 and they split it into 330 chips. I know this. Like that that's I, I what it is. It. You're just buying like a share of, of of an S19 that's been chopped up and you get one single hash board instead of the 330 or whatever it is. That's so, it. And then you can buy the sixth version, the like hexabit axe or something, you know. <sighs> yeah, I didn't realize, I didn't realize <laughs> they're funny. just taking I didn't realize they're just uh Frankensteining the board, taking it apart. They cool it better though. If you don't have them all stacked together, they cool better. And so actually, they're like they're they're pretty efficient. Like it, it, the the only problem is is the payback cost of that initial outlay of investment of like a hundred dollars. It, it takes forever when you don't have much hash rate. This is the problem: is the the like initial capital investment as a proportion of the hash rate. It's not a three hundred thirtieth of an S nineteen in cost. But that's the hash rate you're getting, so it's a bad deal on that basis. But yeah, you can run it on your power at home, and so, maybe you win so the lottery. Hold on, let me let me let me say what my fantasy about these bid axes are. So what we do is uh, we 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 make them in bulk, you know, bring the costs down, whatever that might be. I think when I talked to them, uh, 
hypothetically, if, if, if you started having people build their own and they got the raw parts, we get like down to like $50 per bid axe or so. And then the idea would be uh, every college student goes into their dorm room, plugs these things in, and then we have a college student mining pool where oh, no one it's free, any of the free electricity. electricity. Yeah. Mm. And every, and, and you know how there's like the SEC. Well, anyways, you have like, you have like hundreds of thousands of college students plug in these things for free electricity. And, you know, they're plugging in laptops, you know, these things pull very little, right. Compared to like a, a laptop charge or something. So it would be like kind of undetectable more or less. And yeah, I mean, I think this would be like really fun idea where it's like, Hey, there's a mining so, pool. Everyone can participate. Every time there's a block found, it's like, I'm, oh, we got twenty bucks today. This yeah. is the revolution. We're subverting all of these institutions by stealing their electricity for Bitcoin mining. Like, <laughs> like, like back, like... back, back in the old day, like back when, like, apparently, Magoo says he he, he mined uh, Bitcoin on university computers in 2010. So it's like it, it, that sort of almost that sort of vibe, but not quite. I just well, think. That the, that's the hack for these bid axes is you find places with you can just plug them into the wall without you know not pay for electricity and i think sort that's airbnb like the, hotel rooms this sort of thing well, yeah exactly and i just think that's that when 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 i kind of put that the pieces together there i'm like oh i always thought bid axes were kind of weird and like a waste of time and i'm like oh, wait this is actually kind of cool i like this you know it is cool i i mean look i you know I, and i so get where it have you that got your bid axe is it plugged in in like zbd offices somewhere no you don't have to tell us Hey man, what's uh? Oh, you know the whole what? part is they're undetectable. Walton, come on. What bit axe? We're just having a conversation here about hypothetical hardware being plugged into hypothetical places. Look, all, all we're saying thing. is we give students twenty dollars to go there <laughs> to their <laughs> dorms. They plug this stuff in. We're middlemen bit axers, and we okay. So this is the business. So this we're, is gonna, we're going, so going to we're going to put you on the road as a traveling salesman. Oh, you're going to go up to university <laughs> colleges. You, I know you'll love this job. You're going to pitch to all the sorority and fraternity people. You got this. I love to travel. Is, we I, just started a new business I, right now. <laughs> we just started a company. For for reference though, just to go back to something that you said, I, I just want to give people a frame of reference. My my bid axe right now, okay, and I've got the two oh one. Okay. Um I am going at thirty seven point five five watts per terahash, and I'm really I'm doing three hundred eighty seven point twelve uh gigahash per second. Just so, divide the second number by the first number for me, yeah. please. Oh, I don't want to do math right now. What was it? Three you say three thirty thir what was it? It was uh, three uh, three hundred eighty six thirteen is the giga hash per second, and the three eighty six yeah, and the efficiency is thirty seven point eighty five mm. watts per terahash. That's not great. Like I thought, like no. I thought you could get them down to like twenty twenty like twenty tera like watts per terahash. That was the efficiency that like I thought you could do. Um, yeah, I, I've been ja I've been messing with the numbers. Humidity. I've been messing with the numbers though the uh, the internal core voltages, and I, I just I think at this point I've maxed it out. Because you you can raise the the core voltage um, on the bid axe. You oh, know, you're saying like default. you're saying like at lower at lower power ratings, yeah. you can get a better like um, yeah. efficiency, but yes. you just want to get max max yeah. hash rate. Right? Yeah, because it's really in, it's really inexpensive. So, but anyways, I know it's a lottery. I know that it's not quote unquote. You know, you're not mining Bitcoin, but guess what? These devices are super fun. I love their little interfaces. And I, I love that they're just growing now. They're growing. It's, Look, it's cool. The Southern, the Southern college mining pool doesn't have to be a lottery. It can be stable income for, for college students so they can focus on their studies. We're, we're going to make it where they don't have to have a side job. They just plug in their bid axe and it takes care of all their tuition, all their funding, pays for all their books. I mean, we need to, we need to change the world, Phil. We're going to put you on the road you're going to go out and pitch this. I don't think you run the numbers on this too well. Mike's I, making mining great again. Here I he goes. Want Phil, I want to make sure Phil does the division multiplication and not Walton here. Um, I'm not doing the math. We'll, we'll take the higher. Of, of, I, thought the pro, I thought the point was is that in the South division didn't work. And like, that's like, that's what we're trying to get away from Tidwell. Like, can you, can you make your mind up? Well, we're kind of, and well, it's, you can divide, but you can't conquer the south just remember that we're not going any further into this history lesson i'm just pointing that out we're we're shifting from this history lesson in the number segment to the fireside chat the fireside chat is brought to you by our new sponsor
to the Pleb Underground, Thunder Funder. Thunder Funder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. Check them out at thunderfunder.com. Take a look at the amazing projects that they invest in. Thunderfunder.com. Check it out. Also brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at CypherSafe.io. Guys, the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. I always talk to you about this. 16 ounces of solid titanium. This is for the pet rock enjoyers. I am a pet rock enjoyer. Absolutely beautiful craftsmanship coming to you from CypherSafe.io. It is the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. Welcome back to the Fireside Chat, and we are joined by Tidwell. Tidwell is the mastermind creator, um, the grand Pumbaa, if you will, of the uh, the TabConf. That's right. I'm giving you that that awesome, grandiose title. I like okay. to say that I, I, to me, this is wild, and I, I feel like no one knows this. Like Tidwell, Tidwell used to do the job that now, like a whole department does. I believe Tidwell ran like thousands. Or was it hundreds of thousands? I get a loose track of lightning nodes like simultaneously for for ZBD. Like to me, this is wild. Doing like one routing node, yeah, that's you know, like thousands. Like what the hell? Like like how how does like well anyway? Uh, I think I was one of the first people to take lightning to scale for an industry, but uh, much less than hundreds of thousands and less than thousands of uh, nodes. So oh, it was hundreds. Was it, was it hundreds? I don't know. It was a lot of, was a lot of lightning nodes. Well, Managing it depends, those how you define, depends on how you define a node, uh, depending on something that has its own and, channel. I don't know. Depending on individual states that are managing channels, we'll say closer to dozens, but with, with scaling ideas, a lot of times you can abstract the way, uh, what a lightning node is uh, to have various efficiencies on the back end. So uh, there is... Yeah, okay. You kind of proved my point, though, is that, like, yeah, Tid Tidwell like, can do stuff. Yeah. So before we, before we dive into the uncomfortable conversation about the TAB conference, um, <laughs> would you say, uh, would, you, would you say that lightning is dead? Cause, cause there's a lot of shit coiners. I, you know, like they, they, they love to pretend that lightning is dead. And I feel like you coming from your background, working with Zebedee, doing the tab comp, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like you have a really good frame of reference for, you know, we know that there's limitations, right? Nothing is perfect, but is this thing dead? I don't think it is. I actually I just, just used it before. Be, but. I want to be clear that <laughs> my opinion is not reflective of ZBD. Uh, yes. My opinion is mine alone, and uh, what it is, I feel Lightning actually adds demand on the network. It makes Bitcoin more useful and puts greater demand on layer one, which will increase fees uh, ultimately. Or you know, if if you if you take that out far enough, if Lightning becomes the most useful thing since you know whatever slice bread, then you're putting more demand on layer one, uh, which is counterintuitive to how people are saying, oh, you'll open up a channel and then you'll need less layer one demand. Well, there's already so much demand and so much utility uh, for Bitcoin transactions that creating a use case for uh, micropayments and more usability for Bitcoin uh, actually greatly uh, increases the demand for layer one. Uh, we're, we're not really at the point where it's it's to say, hey, we have so or much. Or eleven capacity. sats per V byte, right? Like, sorry, say again. Eleven sats per V byte currently. Yeah, what? I, yeah, whatever, whatever it's at, it's it's low. I'll just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Whatever the sats per V byte is, until we're at like five hundred sats per V byte, I, in my opinion, it's low. And um, the use cases for Lightning, because of the PPM. And, be, and be, uh, because of the idea that there's going to be this idea of a percentage fee per transaction alone, which nearly everyone does to help to help prevent spam. Uh, not only that, but with a minimum one sat per per hop sort of idea, which I totally agree with, be, uh, because you want to prevent uh, just bullshit spam on the network. There is going to be cases where there's certain amounts of 
your, your, your transaction amount gets to the point where it's cheaper just to go layer one, even if you have a channel open, unless you already have like a business to business sort of really like, Hey, we're going to have a high throughput KYC channel that is like zero fees, but it's because these two businesses have a strong relationship sort of idea. Uh, and then at that point, it's like, well, why are we even using lightning? We can do off, you know, off band sort of reconciliation every, you know, 30 days or every, you know, at the end of the day, whatever it might be, and just kind of forego, you know, uh, the tech uh, completely and have more of a business kind of operation there. When when you are, so going back to the, the minimum, you know, percentage, you know, typically 0.01% and the one sat per hop, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking... You know, at some point when you get to 100,000, 200,000, 1 million, you know, 10 million, I mean, at some point it's going to be way, way, way cheaper just to do a normal layer one where it's like, hey, I only spent, you know, uh, 200 V bytes worth of, you know, transaction fees here. And that's going to be way cheaper than the, uh, than the lightning cost. So what I think lightning really does is it enables micropayments, which are not possible on layer one. So micropayments mean anything, you know, whatever, under a few thousand sats. Um, where you'd literally be creating dust if you're using layer one. Mm -hmm. And this, these are new use cases that aren't possible before, which in my opinion, creates more demand to open these channels. And at the end of the day, until we get this really, really honed in, you know, everyone's going green and perfectly splicing in and out and everyone's picking up their garbage and recycling their 10 cans until we get this like really kind of like bizarre, like efficiency model, lightning is going to be a net impact in terms of it's going to increase demand and not decrease demand. I think this uh, fairy tale idea of uh, lightning being so prevalent that it would reduce layer one demand is sort of fictitious at the moment because of the idea where the software isn't flushed out, their splicing is not popular, it's not widely supported. You're opening and closing channels constantly that normally you wouldn't even of of had this impact on the network in the first place mm. uh we're we're still far away from lightning taking any transactions away from layer one and i think because of utility of potential lightning you're 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 thinking ideas where you're maybe probably... i'm retarded i do things on lightning because they could the, the instant confirmation i prefer i'd rather just like sort it out yeah like, and, like i don't even check what on-chain fees are maybe i'm an idiot like sometimes i'm doing like it's not i don't know not giant transactions but like so, you know a couple hundred dollars here and there like uh, of, of, of bitcoin i don't even check what main main chain fees are yeah that's just the fast. Other, that's the other that's the other sort of i would say use case that i didn't talk about is you 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 provide another use case, which is the quicker settlement versus waiting for a confirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, I still, I feel like, um, you know, that use case is is obviously interesting, but from what I'm seeing uh, in in the industry, the the in terms of volume and transaction count, the the majority of like the fun of Lightning is actually the the micro payment possibilities and oh, obviously i'm biased i'm not surprised i'm not the, surprised i'm not surprised that's just because space. of the volume of like yeah. uh, people like zbd right like of of games related things or other other things where there is a greater frequency of transactions right right and and you know if i worked at river maybe i would have a different opinion on this um since i work at zbd i'm like seeing tons of you know sub they do a lightning stuff. report is that right River, Remember State of Lightning, or something like that. So I don't know. Maybe you both do. I don't think ZBD does. I know. I think River every so often does like a transparency report on their infrastructure, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if any other company doing that. I don't think Strike and ZBD, for instance, do that kind of thing. So uh, kudos to River showing their cards, and uh, I think uh, Alex is their CEO. Um, so shout out to yeah. him for that sort of decision of saying like, "Hey, we're gonna." Yeah, yeah, sorry, it was in October exactly. 2023. I think it was a one, maybe a one-time thing, but like there was there was a lightning report grew by 1,212 mm -hmm. percent in two years. Anyway, huh? Look at that! It's not dead. Yeah, I, I can't dead. see your 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 screen zoom. Did I yeah, break it? Go. Sorry. Yeah, no. Now you did it again. Did it again. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So I think I think when when you hear people um, talk about Lightning as a pure scaling solution, I think that's when people get disenfranchised. It was kind of pitched this way as a you know this perfectly scale scalable silver solution. bullet. 
And but is that just by opinion, idiots that like relayed the, the the message wrong? Because in the yeah. in the lightning white paper, of course, it said it needed a was it 133 megabyte blocks or something like this. So the message was there from the beginning. It's always well, there from the beginning. It wasn't. It wasn't it's... there on Clubhouse. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, oh, but yeah, we were there on Clubhouse. Did well, like you know, like. <sighs> Well, I'm just saying that I you... could spot you one of the people that knew what you were talking about there, but the, like there were a lot of people that talked a lot there, and not everyone knew what they were talking about. Yeah. The only reason I think that Lightning has this sort of idea that oh, Lightning's dead is because people had the wrong idea about Lightning in the first place, and I I think that That's... it's it's a great uh, tool. It's the only layer two that really works right now. Um, it's it's great. Uh, I think it it's it's definitely um, whatever ends up being a scaling solution in the future right might even use lightning for for swapping in and out of that you know whatever solution if it's a side chain or whatever i don't think lightning's going anywhere i don't think it's going to die it's sort of like in my opinion here to stay unless it completely gets replaced by something better mm -hmm. and uh it's just when people say lightning's dead it's because when fees went up people got disenfranchised people got these forced closures they spent all this money on on this stuff the software also is constantly being re improved and in my opinion still more or less beta yeah i agree uh, and, and when i say that i mean you know i the so the, the software apparently uh through using it over the last whatever six years uh is apparently not easy to to work with i mean we're talking about cryptographic utxo management stuff and it's just like it it's like oh every you know few years we're like oh we had a bug where everyone could steal everything and it's like insanely complicated versus something maybe more simple and mm -hmm. uh when, when, you know, just the fact if we had like zero bugs, we might also have prevented a lot of this like UX, you know, issues and, and, and this sort of like stigmatism towards lightning. I mean, when people uh, are having issues where people, if you have a malicious uh, peer and malicious channel partner, they can really, you know, mess with you. And if, if you're, if you're peered with someone that wants to be an asshole and some of these solutions don't have any good solutions. And that's why what about, what people are, well, not even that, but just more or less like uh, uh, you're, you're not going to peer with someone that you don't know. And that's like the more safe approach. And I, I know, like, mm -hmm. when, you know, that sort of goes against what we thought lightning could do originally, where you could, oh, it's cryptographic security. There's no reason to, you know, you don't have to trust anyone. You can peer with random people on the network and, you know, spread the graph and decentralize it, distribute it. And and then you, and then you learn like, wait, there's some fundamental problem. I mean, Matt Carello talked about this at TabConf. Like, you know, there's some fundamental problems where it's like, well, if someone wants to be a dick, you know, watchtowers aren't even going to, that's only if they're trying to steal like layer one pretty much on you. And, and this is more just like people just like saturating your channels and fucking you up and holding you hostage where it's like well do you want to close it you know if you do then you have to pay this this fee and um yeah just sort of like when fees go up also <laughs> it kind of breaks a lot of assumptions that kind of people had right with lightning uh, especially when you had to like tie in the fee ahead of time and that was not necessarily something easy to predict yeah there's there's all sorts of uh things that that people weren't expecting you know funny enough when lightning first came out people didn't even realize that and, and when i say people you have to you have to remember like i'm not even talking like casa right like like one of the mm -hmm. first people to, to sell a lightning node you know there was no there was no there wasn't this idea where it's like oh you have to like back up your node and then you know all this stuff they you know the, the idea a lot of people had was if you had the 12 word seed eventually your channels would close and you would eventually have the money just trickle back to your like you know your 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 wallet your seed yeah and, and people you know were like wait a minute that's not how it works and like so <laughs> there's been misconceptions with the way lightning's been built especially because Taj and poon uh talked about a different version of lightning in the white paper versus what actually got implemented by uh blockstream and lightning labs right it was a different sort of model um and then when you're actually you know building this in and, and building a company and doing all this stuff you realize like why the fuck do we have millisets and you're just like this just complicates everything yeah and you're, you're like maybe taj was right maybe we should have just rounded to the nearest set <laughs> you know what i mean like um anyways he wrote that with um uh, I think it's Joseph Poon in uh, 2016, right? I think it was 2016. 
something like that. Anyways, yeah, that was uh, I, I was one of the people who purchased a Casa node, the Rev One. Uh, I was uh, one of the people who built an original Raspy Bolt, right? The one from Staticus three thousand, where you actually had to compile scripts and stuff like that. Uh, and then I also built uh, the uh, the Raspy Blitz. So and I were and I I worked a lot with um uh, with Roots All and Open Noms and uh, Frankie and a few of the other guys from that team. I really loved what they were doing. So yeah, that time uh, it was a lot of learning, right? Like it, it was. Um, I mean, I can tell you that I didn't I didn't open any channels with any peers that I didn't know. Right. Like that was, you know, I'd only open channels with peers that I knew, but also at the same time, um, in terms of backing up channels, I lost anyways, I, I had a, one of my nodes, I forget if the hard drive died or whatever it was, man, but like, there, let there me, was let like me get six, those, the coffin node, not the raspy blitz one. Uh, no, unfortunately it was, was my blitz and it was oh, my, no. yeah, it was my hard drive. And, uh, anyways, there was no channel backup, uh, at the time. Okay. Like way back when. And well, let me rephrase that. You could manually run the command to do the channel backup, but I didn't, I wasn't aware of it. Right. I wasn't, I thought there'd be a everyone button. in 20, so, this was 2018. Yeah, this is 2018. So everyone in 2018, unless you're like super like in the know, everyone just kind of assumed like, Oh, 12 word seed. That's yes. what I mean. And, and, and the funny part is even like Casa thought that. <laughs> It's well, like, I learned that it wasn't. I mean, that granted, way. not everyone at Casa maybe thought that, but like a lot of people at Casa even thought that the people selling it, and it's just like no one actually took the time to like go to Bit Devs and like know what was. I don't know. It's just funny to me because this was so like understood to, I guess, Lightning people, but not the people making products that sold the light <laughs> that made yeah. the stuff like. <laughs> Well, I could tell you uh, that I had about 6% of a Bitcoin that was lost in limbo for a few years uh, until I was able to find somebody who shall not be named who was able to help me uh, retrieve my Bitcoin. I had tried myself. I did. There, there was like a toolkit that you could run. Uh, I'm totally forgetting what it's called. And uh, yeah, I just I kept on failing miserably until this person was just like, all right, let me let me help you out. So but, someone from Lightning Labs and I published a toolkit to recover a corrupt LND channel ah. DB. Maybe like so um you it that might have been spawned from my issues with corrupted uh DBs. But you know you have to think about the the whole thing was you know I'm guessing everything was LND that you're doing. So yep. <laughs> everything was like you know and go and everything was cool. And oh also there's this thing called bolt db and oh what a great name bolt db right let's use that you know because it's a goling uh db uh is not maintained lightning labs has to like fork it they call it b bolt and then they're like a database company now that's maintaining their own go custom database called b bolt and they're the only ones probably in the world using this database and it's super custom and it and it's like dude, this thing is corrupting when it's like you know because it you know you pull the power or you know the disk you know it doesn't finish a write and messes up the the database and it's and it's oh it was such a such an engineering decision to to use this custom database I think that was the crux of a lot of the issues um, most likely yes and man oh man oh man that everyone learned about this database that we should never have had to learn about. <laughs> You know, what I mean? it's very like... interesting. <laughs> if it's any consolation, uh, giant corporations uh, make these same mistakes. Um, you know, like instead of hiring a database, uh, like a, a database engineer, right? Like a, an actual person who knows how to build databases and tables and structures and indexes and whatnot, they uh, they get somebody who doesn't know how to do it and just kind of puts it all together from scratch because it just costs less. Well, I want to I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying because. Mm. A lot of companies don't make their own database. They'll no, they don't. They'll, they'll use they'll SQL, like Microsoft SQL, yes. Postgres, whatever. <laughs> but but I worked yeah. for a company that tried. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I guess I, I then then yeah, that's that's. And it wasn't uh, good. Unless you're a good. database company, like you're. Hey, I'm. I'm. We're making a new. No, they weren't. <laughs> by, by the way, I think I think a really cool name for a database, if anyone's listening to this, would be Caffeine DB. Go ahead and make oh. that one. Ooh, uh, I like that. But see, it's like now we have yet another database, and it's like, oh, um, 
Anyways, I'm... Hey, I've got a cool database. It's called Bitcoin. Have you heard about this database it's called Bitcoin? We've heard about it. It's okay. <laughs> All right. All right, let's uh, let's switch gears away from the lightning and the database. I think that my I think that uh, Tidwell proved his uh, how his do point people that... put new entries in the database for TabConf? Please tell us yeah. more, sir. So you are the uh, you are the the organizer, the creator of TabConf. Let's let's dive into no, it. No, there's right? no such thing. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. TabConf it's decentralized. Is an open source Bitcoin open source. conference. All right, Tidwell, go on. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what TabConf is anymore. It's just whatever the community makes it at this point. It's a uh, it's open source conference. It's like saying who who controls Bitcoin, you know? That's a, that's a hard question to ask. Uh, the original creator of TabConf uh, disappeared. We don't know who who that person is, and uh, they gave me maintainer access of the of TabConf, and uh, you know, very similar stories to Bitcoin. Is that is that the the way to so solve it? So people? are you the Gavin Andreessen of of TabConf? <laughs> yeah, minus the Bitcoin Cash or minus. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah. should we be worried about Tidwell and his TabConf Cash? I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's something I always think about forking TabConf and and giving it larger blocks. TabConf uh, SV. I, haven't gone that tab, I heard TabConf is actually just like uh, it's an FBI so, honeypot um, um, that like Luke like um, helps to run. Isn't that isn't that true? It's just like this. This is where um, Luke claimed. Oh, Luke uh, lost you know uh, uh, some Bitcoin in an FBI accident, and um, uh, and then everyone at TabConf gets like um, we all split the we all split the we all split the Bitcoin and like, uh, like, evenly. Like, not just KYC AML, like this is like some you know deep, deep, deep state penetrative stuff kind of thing. Um, like so one thing everyone's that's... everyone's family's getting hunted down. I don't know what's going on, but uh, is is this not true? Tabconf is a, is a honeypot. Yeah. So so this is this is a good question. Um, I think you know the answer, maybe, but the I don't know. Tabconf's and... awesome. I don't care. Like that's then that's that's what everyone else's attitude should be too. No, that's really terrible advice. But like everyone knows, if you go to conferences, like I guess they're honeypots, you know. Well, this is this is a big misconception because there's a lot of people that think that Tabconf complied and talked to the FBI, and that's not the case. And Peter Todd made a tweet that made it seem like this to a lot of people. So. Uh, TabConf is not currently under investigated investigation. We've never talked to the FBI. Um, we don't plan to, and that is the case for TabConf. So, uh, fake news. Big, this big misconception because there is an a Bitcoin event going on in Atlanta, and you know Mike Schmidt, also with a Michael name, right? Organized. <laughs> I think there was also this idea that this was me. Um, and you need to get a council of mics together then clearly right yeah well it's, it's just it's just you know the damage was already done people thought this was tabconf uh, especially because tabconf is attended by a lot of core devs and this was like a core dev meeting so uh it was you know it's a misconception and it's unfortunate but at the end of the day mike schmidt uh revealed like emails like nothing really intrusive just more or less like uh, you know, Luke is doing his investigation and the FBI is like, well, who attended uh, the core dev uh, meeting? Um, and then, you know, they just pretty much said these are the people that attended and that's pretty much it. That's hmm. as far as what I understand to be the truth. And it's not anything where people were like cavity searched or anything crazy. Right. Um Oh, see, like, apparently some people. If you should have, you should have, you should have said that that did happen because I heard that some people that would book tickets like only if that was the case. Um, but uh, you know, they were demanding the cavity searches. So yeah, perverts, like you, you're gonna have to find that somewhere else. That is no longer a service that like you can get at Tabcom for free. Like you're gonna have to speak to Mike about some special sort of sponsorship. Thank. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, well, we keep it we keep it clean at TabConf, family friendly. Uh, we're we're that's uh... kycjelly.com. Plebner, let's go. Yeah. We're, so, we're, we're... anyways, no. 
Okay, so so Mike, we were discussing something a little bit before the show that that we had decided that we were going to discuss during the show because it seemed to be a, a good topic. Um, I, of course, would disagree with that. Uh, but why that, isn't Tabkov good enough to lure Phil out of his basement? No, there you no, go. That for, so the framing of that question is is disingenuous to begin with. It's the framing of the question. I think it's a yeah, perfect Phil framing. Phil in a basement. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Attic. Ground floor, whatever it might it's be. Ground floor. It's ground floor. Okay. Wing. We only have one floor. We only have one floor in this house. There's no two floors. The we west, ditched. the west wing in the, the, in west the floor. Wing. <laughs> but look, um, it, it's it, so so. This is the thing, right? Like, I I just I hate I hate to travel, and it has to do with my my past life. And I know I understand. Yes, people sit there and just be like, oh, get over it. You know, just get over it. it doesn't matter. I get well, that. You I, I can appreciate in the that. past life film. I but, can picture that. Sorry. You were an air stewardess in your past life, is that right? No, I can picture. No, it. I wasn't. <laughs> Far from a stewardess, but um, yeah, I, I had to travel a lot for work uh, all over the place, and oftentimes not on um, not my uh, not my decision. Right? Uh, there was no can you go. There was just you're going, um, and you're going to deal with people's nightmares um, and oh, giant so we need to be more direct nightmares. with you. So you yeah, you see that you're going. You're going. So, People so for me, I, I've just, I, I have this like aversion to having to travel, you know, I just, I fucking hate it. Okay. And, like, that's what it is. It's just, and it's not, and it's weird because I totally enjoy the events themselves. And I'm sure this isn't very different from, from other people that I've heard that don't like travel. I, I totally want to hang out with my friends. I totally want to have like those experiences and everything like that. But the traveling part of it. It's just what, this Phil, shitty... what's further? What's yeah. further, Atlanta or Austin? That's a trick question. Austin. Is it? Is <laughs> it? <laughs> That's a trick. So, so Walton's giving me a hard time I because I, I went to Austin. You to Texas and you're like, let's I'm go. Coming, let's go. Yeah. I don't know. I, like I said, I just, I, I fucking hate traveling, but I'm also not necessarily predictable in this way. So who knows? Maybe I well, do end up showing up I, to the Tabcom. make you upset? And how can I fix our relationship? No. You, why you did why not isn't make Tidwell's invitation as nice as Lisa's? Like, I guess that's his question. Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one. Okay. I'll make something up on the spot. I hate Georgia. <laughs> There you I go. hate Georgia. I, I hate, hate Georgia. peaches. I like oranges only. This is why I live in Florida. Yeah. No peaches. They they gave me a speeding ticket when I was leaving the state, and I forever hate them. Okay, there you go. That's my made up excuse. No, you, you did nothing. It's just like you know, I'm a human and finicky and like I don't know. You know, oh, like I maybe I changed my mind. You. I, I, I haven't said totally no to it in my head. Okay, I've I've oh. been going back and forth. How far is it? from your house before it's considered travel? That's my question. Oh, dude. Like half a mile, maybe yeah. like three quarters of a mile. Like, I mean, I don't know, like the, you're talking like a couple of hours. Starbucks, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> it's so, a big deal. Them. Like, don't make, like, don't make Phil go outside his comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so if you have to pick up groceries, you get groceries delivered to your door. No, no, no. I, I definitely go and Here's pick a up wife groceries. For that. But that, on, that's man. a, but that's a, no, wife and I go out to do that. But the point is, is that like that right She's there, man, that's a chore, man. We're, wife, right? we're going out, you know, like that's it. Like that, that's going out, you yeah, know, you need to bring your wife to tap pump is what you're saying. Oh, she's not coming to tap. She, so go, to, she go to Whole Foods for a bit of a uh, foreplay. Let's go. She doesn't give a fuck about any of this stuff, okay? I'm just I'm just putting it out there, okay? Like, look, she totally appreciates me being passionate about this, and she appreciates my passion, but she does not give a shit. She heard she's heard way too much Bitcoin stuff for everybody. So so yeah, no, but um, but yeah, I it's like I I always just I'm always on the fence inside my head. I'm always on the fence. So it's not a total no. It's like, eh. Let me let me ask you a question, a philosophical and 90% question. Ninety percent no. What do you what do you feel the purpose is of a Bitcoin conference? That's see, so that's the real interesting part, right? What is the purpose of a Bitcoin conference? So, um, what I'd like to believe the purpose of a Bitcoin conference is is that we go there to learn, right? I, I think that different people have different aims. Some of us go there to reinforce. Um, what we already believe, it's kind of like con confirmation bias in, in a way, right? Because we are already, let's say, into Bitcoin and passionate about this. So we go there for that. There's other people that go there also, you know, strictly to network, 
right? Like some people go there to network and meet other people in the space and see if, you know, maybe they can collaborate on different projects and whatnot, depending on whatever their disciplines are. Some people go there for a combination of things. Uh, in all fairness, in each conference that I've gone to, um, I've gone there just to have fun. Like for me, it's right. just a matter of like, you know, like shooting the shit, having some good jokes, right? Going for dinner, cool. like that it's, it's really just that. And yeah, I might learn a little something, right? I, I may learn a little something, but for, you know, because I'm not a coder, I don't really go there necessarily to, you know, to deep dive, you know, into the, you know, into the talks, right? Like I'm pretty fucking useless for that shit. I think conferences <laughs> are like hopium, but like without the bad side effects, right? So like, yeah, okay. They like, they get you like hyped, right? Like to me, but they don't get you hyped on Bitcoin. They get you hyped on Bitcoiners. I, it's, I always say Bitcoin is the thing that I'm more bullish on than Bitcoin, and the only thing that I'm more bullish yeah. on than Bitcoin. Yeah. And it reminds me that there's a whole bunch of like people that are working on like they work and stuff. And yeah, sure they party while well, you know at a bit of the conferences, but they're thanks. Is it man. your birthday? I think I said party, and the balloons popped. Oh, cool! Party. All right, party, um, party. Yeah. Um, Damn, okay. it's not working. Uh, distracted me now. Um, <laughs> But the, the the point is, is there are a lot of like Bitcoiners working on lots of cool stuff, and I I think it's it, when you go to these events, you feel this this momentum, and I think that's I think it's I think it's a great thing. There aren't many. I go I go there to disprove everyone that says there's no Bitcoin community because they're wrong, and every time I go, I, I prove them wrong. Like, not I don't do it for that reason, but like it, it's true. Every single time, there's a great, great, great Bitcoin community. Anyone who says there isn't, like maybe you have like some social, like maybe it's a skill issue, right? Like, um, B no Bitcoin has community. has great community. I mean, there's some like you know chodes, <laughs> sure. Like there's like any community, right? <laughs> but like chodes. the the the, <laughs> the point is in general, there are like the Bitcoiners are getting are getting richer. Like and they have hope for the future. In and in general, that's like a good community to be part of, right? Like these people are yeah. thinking more long term as a consequence. Like they are, um, I think, you know, better, better, not always better, like mannered people. Like, but but they are they are more more inspired people, more hopeful people. And um, you know, I don't know. They they they're traveling more. They they. I, they're opening they're opening their eyes to the world. I think there's a lot of people that, that um I think most people Bitcoin is giving them new opportunities and that's not just because they're they're saving money. I think like they are um the reason why it's good hopium, the conferences, is because you do do some of this networking. And some of that might be just a social thing, but I do think there's a huge amount of like social work and kind of a spiritual like thing to it. Like people go to concerts, right? Not just for the music, right? It's for this like collective vibe um, walton is slowly making us sound like a cult <laughs> no look slowly look, we're like drifting into the did a cult. Like, they all suck. hey look everyone's happy like in this cult everyone's happy like and, and everyone also speaks their mind and i think that's quite like, a, that's like it's a rare combination like i know a lot of people that speak their mind they're not very happy people um it, i mean it's because they talk a lot of bullshit as well but like the, you know the, 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 in bitcoin there's a lot of truth spoken there's a community built on truth and there's a lot of great things happening and i think that's what you see at a conference um yeah you learn things too but i find it more productive to learn things when I'm at home, one on one with, you know, that way. We all have our parties. I, think, no, I go to yeah. try and like, I go to try and I'm like, I, I said this before. I'm part of like Bitcoin HR. It's like I go yeah. to like keep 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 the party going. The party being like people doing important stuff, and the conference is actually where a lot of those people, you know, do have some fun. So yeah, it's good to help out. I think I think. Uh you guys are honing in on one of the most important parts, which is the fun part, which can be dissected a, a few different ways. Like you can have fun where it's like, Hey, we've all decided we're going to stack some sats and, you know, we're all becoming more wealthy as time goes on. And we're developing relationships and friendships with people also well to do and also building up this community. And it's a lot of fun when you see your friend start a business or when you see your friend work on a project that also helps everyone's bags get more valuable. And it's like this, everyone like helping each other out, sort of like we're building the future sort of thing. And that is a lot of fun, right? I think there's the fun aspect of it and the fact that people spend an inordinate amount of time and their free time into this, you start 
where it's like, hey, the only time I get to see the other people that are doing interesting things with me is when I go to these conferences and hang out with them. And I'm, you know, that is a lot of fun to hang out with your friends and you start developing friendships, right? In the Bitcoin space. That is one reason why we keep TopConf as cheap as possible. Wait, you and guys have friendships outside of the Bitcoin space? Yeah, I mean, I got I got my Bitcoin friend group. I got my high school friend group. I got my work friend. You know, I got different yeah. friend groups, and they're all slowly merging right into one friend group. But uh, but I I think it's this. You thing mean as like as Bitcoiners strive and survive, and everyone else just like dies off in the wastelands? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and and also like as as we get older, as you know, another generation passes, we're gonna want to be with people well off that are interested in the same things. You know. And it's like, you know, we built this t together. We're all, you know, sort of friends. And it, it's this amazing thing where we sort of started as plugs. And now where it's like, hey, we, we have, you know, uh, families and we have, you know, PhDs in math. And, you know, we have uh, 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 bunkers in Florida, you know, we all have our thing. And uh, just kidding. But but what I, I guess what, what I was trying to say is one of the key aspects, you know, to make it fun and to really focus on that in my opinion is making it affordable where people don't feel like hey i have to go and spend several thousand dollars to hang out with my friends like that's the part where i'm like whoa that's that's it's like why why are we spending all this money to hang out with our friends and hmm. uh, that's that's the part where uh hold on. Got it. it's supposed to be in another that's, meeting that's where, running like, it's hard when yeah, they're far but, away like sorry, what do you but, but i was saying that's that's the part where i'm like thinking you know Let's keep let's keep tab comp as cheap as possible, right? And and to to maybe you know one of the big goals of tab comp is to be fun, right? And I think that's awesome that you said that because I totally agree. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong, and it's not worth it, uh, especially because of how much work goes into it. If you're if this isn't fun, we're totally like the conference running and the conference organization is a, is a total stressful waste of time if you're not going to have fun, you know, in the process and and day of, you know. So I totally agree with you, Phil. And also Walton, mm -hmm. great, you know, you know, icing on the on the cake with 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 the comments there. So I couldn't agree more with you. The the one thing that I think is also, you know, you could also say that fun is the is the main category, but in my opinion, fun is also playing games and playing a game, in my opinion, is how can we hack Bitcoin to make it better? And what can we talk about to have fun conversations that uh actually progress the space i, I see so, it more than that it's about i actually see it as more like hey these these people that don't don't normally work together have some fun together and actually maybe then start working together it's actually where some of these new relationships get formed where new bitcoin businesses get formed but that doesn't necessarily always happen through the social stuff they might do the social stuff and then they do the hackathon together and then the you know like just like with bitcoin you need multiple touch points before you adopt Bitcoin. I think the same is true kind of with like relationships, right? Like you need multiple multiple touch points uh, before before these things get established. And I think the social stuff provides some of some of those touch points. Um, yeah. We try to make the most fun, nerdy possible experience. Like, uh, for instance, uh, if you don't mind, I'll show a couple fun, nerdy things that we'll be planning. That's mm -hmm. all right. Absolutely. So one, one is the. Wait, you said we'll be planning. I thought like no one plans this. I thought everyone's plans this. I thought it was decentralized. So, so I'm personally planning a few things. Uh, other people are planning other things, but I'm going to talk about what a couple people are planning. So one thing that's being planned right now is uh, Ben Ark is going to be doing like a nice. area. We're giving him some floor space where people can come and build uh, hacker badges. And the idea is to use infrared to send and receive sats through a hardware thing and LEDs and like a vibrating motor when you've been hit, it like vibrates and, uh, you know, LEDs light up. So the idea is like, you know, we're going to build these at the conference, have fun. You know, it's like if you've never messed with hardware and like loaded firmware onto the machine, you know, the whole idea is like you can come here, play with play with this, build it and feel like, oh, shoot, like I, I built like a piece of hardware that like does some cool like zapping stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, helping people learn about TapScript through the Capture the Bitcoin Challenge, so people can form teams and actually learn like how TapScript works, and you know work methodically through the puzzle in order to try to get Bitcoin. Um, these are all like 
examples, for instance, of like making gamifying education and nerdiness and like making it where it's like you start bringing people up to a level of like, oh, I kind of understand this at least at a high level or maybe very deep, depending on, you know, how, how deep you want to go. Um, the, the other thing I was going to say is, you know, to piggyback off what you're saying, Walton, is, you know, we, we bring uh, an environment where we have an environment where protocol developers and people building businesses uh, and protocols on top of those protocols can come together and meet uh, where there's not necessarily too many opportunities to do that in person. So that's uh, that's pretty fun for them, right? It's fun mm -hmm. to meet people that can help. So we, I like to think of if if things aren't fun, then we're doing it wrong. And I like the idea of like a lot of things kind of trickle out of fun in terms of the parent category of the goal of a lot of these things. And uh, it's like, can we make nerdiness and education fun? And how, you know, there's something there for everyone, every uh, level of technical expertise. We're going to have the next gen village run by Asher and Ellie. We're going to have the more super technical unrecorded area, uh, the bit dev Socratic village, and then we'll have the main stage for more general talks. And then the rest of the floor plan is just open for people to, you know, build and hang out and, you know, set up little tables to, to work on projects. So it's going to be uh, a lot of fun and, uh, yeah, and we're going to have it in October this year, October 23rd. So it's going to be a four day event. And like I said, we try to keep costs at near zero. So we make like zero dollars on any ticket sales. We give you four meals and coffee and after parties. And, uh, you know, your ticket pretty much is going to give you an immense amount of value compared to what you'd get at a normal conference. So. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much the sales pitch uh, for anyone who was on the fence. For instance, people in Florida that are really close to Georgia um, that might want to come up. Uh, and also, here's last but not least, there is no excuse to not come to uh, the conference if you can't afford it because, uh, Phil, can you, or Walton, can you share your screen again? Can you bring that back? Yeah, yeah. Because we have donors that specifically believe so deeply in what we're doing with TabConf, you see at the bottom left, you see grants. If you cannot afford to come to the conference, you can apply for the grant program, which means you can get uh, your ticket and travel. You can at least uh, ask to see uh, if you can get it expensed. And um, we really don't want to let someone say like, hey, I really wanna come hang out, contribute, uh, learn, whatever. We really want to do this as the most altruistic, like we are trying to make Bitcoin better. We're trying to build those relationships and have people have meaningful experiences. If you cannot afford to come and you really can't afford and you want to come, we want to help you. And we have people specifically give us money for you. So please take advantage of this. We can't guarantee you that we'll cover your costs, but you can at least apply and we can review it. And, you know, it's kind of like when the money runs out, the run money runs out. But people give us money to help people learn. And uh, please, like, you know, don't make money the excuse for you not to come uh, if you really want to come. And if you can support the conference and you have extra money and want to donate to this fund, you can also donate to help other people come. So it's, it's uh, you know, people talk about charity and stuff like, you know, the funny part is we used to give all the excess money from the conference to HRF and, you know, open sats and brink and stuff. And now uh, we're actually getting money from HRF and they're helping us uh, facilitate, you know, these grants and, and uh, help people come and stuff. So we're, we're sort of becoming the donation destination for people, which is kind of funny because it used to be the opposite. And now it, the conference is way less stressful. We're trying to build a treasury so we don't have to use our own money for the conference, uh, Brandon Iglesias and I. So uh, that's kind of like the sort of, the vibe on there and we're pretty public very about nice money so yeah so if people want to find out people want to find out more information about the conference where do they go well tabconf.com is a great source obviously awesome we're gonna put that uh, in the show notes and if you are interested in participating and you're like hey i have an idea and i don't think it's gonna fly like for me just to come and do it like it's like more of a big deal uh, we have a GitHub submission issue where you can say like, hey, I have this idea for the conference and I want to do it. And you know, like, may I do it? Like if you if you have to ask, it must be something insane. Usually you don't have to ask permission for small stuff. So 
uh, we have GitHub for these things. If you're running a satellite event and you want to help, uh, you want us to post it up there, everything's a GitHub issue. We're trying to make it as open source as possible. You can't buy your way on stage. Everything is done through merit through the GitHub uh, issue. Uh, so if you think we're doing something wrong and want to be part of the curation process for this or next year, you can also, it's it's a community, you know, it's it's based on how much work you want to put in. Uh, we can always use more people to go on GitHub and curate if if people are, you know, want to sort of have their say in what, what gets on stage. And yeah, that's, uh, I, I would say we're the, we're the first and only like truly open source conference. I would like to give a shout out to Nostriga because they uh, wanted to see how our model would work for them. Uh, we learned a lot from them uh, using our, using the tab comp model. And I almost now am at the point where I want to develop like a tip process, like a tab comp improvement proposal kind of uh, repo where people can oh, say yeah. like, it would be better if tab comp was more like this in terms of like how people, you know, organize or how people curate or help, you know, various things about the conference. And uh, I'm like the whole point of the conference is it's adaptable, it's flexible, and I want to make it the best possible Bitcoin conference, period. Uh, which to me means like we're actually doing something. We're not just talking about number go up. We're actually talking about how to make this better. And if anyone uh, comes to TabComp says, hey, it would have been better if it was like this. Like these are the things like I want people to be overly critical and like make this better too. So uh, super open to feedback. And, you know, I want to make it to the point where people are not like asking for permission because it's like TabComp is like an understood like thing. Like, oh, I'm, you know, it's all like sort of like automated and the only thing i'm doing at some point is just buying the venue space and giving people like the address and you know helping with the tickets and stuff and yeah very cool very cool well look we're going to be putting the links to all of that in the show notes you make a very compelling case definitely definitely going to think about it a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gonna think about it a little bit more, but uh, but yeah, uh, you know what? I'll we'll have a we'll have a deal. If if people yeah. see, if if people see this live, so sorry, if people see this recording, so that means that you yeah, this will be posted on Monday. You, you have decided that you're gonna come to TabComp. We'll just make that the rule. You know, I'm glad that you decided you agreed to these terms, and uh, <sighs> thank you we'll so talk much. Offline. We'll, we'll talk. Thank offline. you so much, Phil, for agreeing to these terms. <laughs> Why? Uh, it's been great. So if you're seeing this now, Phil, you'll be able to meet your hero, Phil, in person My in hero. Atlanta. And you know, if if you can't if you can't find Phil in Atlanta, you know, just that means he's hiding. Uh, he's part of the Bitcoin puzzle. How about if Tab know? Comp sell a certain number of tickets, then Phil has to go to Phil has to like Phil Phil gets to go. Like I'm Phil gets really to, like, not like, that special. He, he, I, I'd he, much he, rather he, somebody like, else. Go. His dream his dreams get fulfilled, <laughs> and he gets so to much. like attend TabConf. Like if look, if if TabConf sell 500 tickets, I don't know how many how many I, you on. Look, it's like make a wish. Like Phil is bald. I don't know if he's going through like leukemia or something. Like make a wish. Like, we're gonna get Phil out. <laughs> terrible. To Tab no bad before. joke. Bad joke. Like knock on wood. It's Come not on, terrible. This is, like I mean, this I, is... like. I this had is leukemia, life but, like, and genetics, my like, friend. Because the whole like fake fake cancer thing is a bad joke. But this like, is genetics. It's kind of like, kind of like I had leukemia and I have good hair. Like you know. Yeah, like, this is just, genetics, man. Leukemia, Come on. Like, yeah. This was an edgy podcast. I didn't know I had uh, there's these rules, you know. There's no there's rules. No rules, but like, no rules. hey man, if you haven't had leukemia, like, come, come on, on. Like, show some respect, bro. That's right. You know. Hey, I said, uh, I said, like, make a wish, like. I was, I was saying like, not, you know, that's my, that's my backup. <laughs> All right. So if you would like to, um, uh, uh, uh we love win you, a lifetime, awesome. uh, or like before you die, like if you want to go to TabConf, like, uh, yeah, uh, make a wish and a tip, Tidwell may or may not help you out make your wish come even true. if you're going to die soon. Ah, somehow, somehow. Best, Walton, that was the best way to pitch TabConf, honestly. That is the way we need to start pitching it in the future. If you, hey, if you're gonna die soon, if you're gonna die, like make sure you come to TabComp before you die. Like, yeah, like what else is on your bucket list other than TabComp? Like, it stands for the Atlanta Bucket List Conference. Come on, you know this by now. I am so glad that we check on the inappropriate content checkbox on YouTube when we upload because it makes all of this just disappear. (laughs) It's oh, that's fine. They they can just say all of this. I remember there was a point in time where you didn't have to be so careful about what you said. And I, I think we should bring that back. 
I, know, I don't agree. disagree. I, think, I totally I agree. But then other people should then also say you're being an idiot for saying that, you know, whatever. I think that's yeah. fine. That's... I think, I think no, that's I mean, part of the fair. process. Free I think speech. that's part of the process. You say some dumb shit and you get called out on it. And, exactly. Uh, and hey, I criticism of criticism lost. is not illegal yet. I so you're saying the, world, the, real, the normal world should be more like Twitter a little bit. We've, we've lost the idea of people being able to say dumb shit and then not, and not ruin their political careers. It's kind of yeah. sad. So... Um, nobody's allowed to be a human anymore yeah yeah so look guys normally normally right we do the fireside chat we bring you wrecked and we bring you hopium but the thing is is that we had such an in-depth awesome conversation with mike shaming me walton and mike shaming me that we we're like you know what this is going to do it for the it's episode. basically phil's wrecked if he doesn't go and like what, <laughs> yeah. what is hopium and is hopium really is going, to, go. going to conferences uh like uh and deeter i'm sure if you're watching you're going to hate this episode but like, oh yeah you know, no deeter's going to hate it totally, but that's like, okay. you know stick but, to but, TA, but he also thinks you, he also thinks that bitcoin's dead yeah he, but he, like 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 so. like all of the babies he wishes like like come on like <sighs> The inappropriate content checkbox wins again. Anyways, guys, this is going to wrap up this episode of Pleb Underground. Mike, one more time, one more time. How do people get information on TabConf and how do they get in touch with you? Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on uh, Noster. And my NPUB is NPUB. Let's see. Let me read We've got the... your primal.net address in the show notes. Uh, just, it's actually, just me... <laughs> I'm, I'm verified now with primal. Primal.net yeah. slash Mike 20 spelled out with a one on the end. OPSEC, Mike 21. And if you want to know about TabConf, uh, the best part is you could hate me and still have a very enjoyable experience. It's T A B C O N F dot com. That's tab conference. That's T A B C O N F dot com. Tab conf dot com. That's a very hard word for a lot of people to hear. Um, the funny but I find part, it flows well. Well, a lot of people think I'm saying tap comp and tap con and tab the Atlanta Bitcoin conference tab conf. Yeah. And I think eventually we want to move away from the Atlanta Bitcoin phrasing and just make it tab comp and then keep it like opsec where bitcoin's not even in the name then you're gonna pronounce your but b's tab. tab conference so hold on hold on tab yeah. is a is, it, tab is is a great use for pill right as a synonym so it kind of has a oh see i was thinking like bar meaning. tab like, oh you're thinking bar welcome tab okay to i'm the thinking bar, like, tab conf yeah. i'm thinking like browser tabs because we give away the <laughs> free. Tabs, no. we give away the space for free and it's it's like a big bunch of tabs why not just welcome to the bar tab conf but you see how the shelling point works for like look at us all three of us were thinking different things completely but we it were all like in agreement on tab conf. Like, let's be honest right? kind of yeah so we we have a lot of like the lightning there's not even a lightning village this year well, there's not going to be one there's that no sounds lightning bearish that sounds bearish what's yeah. going on so i think i think at some point there's no need to have a specific village on a specific part of uh, uh, you know, Bitcoin because it just kind of, you know, becomes Bitcoin. You know, it's kind of just like kind of fully, in, you know, it's integrated. I like in, this. Like, it's yeah. funny. You're like, oh, Lightning just kind of is now. And like one of the, like Phil's just like pissed all over the show and decided we're not having any more sections. But I'm going to share a tweet that I was going to share in Rex anyway. But it's kind of hopium and it kind of reflects what you what you're saying here. Here's a tweet from uh, some wanker in a wizard hat. Uh, it says Bitcoin seems like it's poised <laughs> to become the asset many has wanted for a long time in a world that's getting increasingly complex on all fronts. Bitcoin is even starting to stick out as simple, simpler than fiat, simpler than crypto it's starting to get that quality that gold has where it's just a unit of something that stays that way and i think it will be relevant um yeah so that's kind of where we're at with lightning now it's just it just is he says ln is shit he's wrong like um i well, feel like the only people that well, hate lightning don't use lightning right the, the funny part to me is like like eric's tweet is probably based on uh perceptions of what lightning was marketed as that's the biggest problem right that we talked about earlier is yeah. it was no, marketed he's a hater. to, to he, Eric he has the, he has vested I mean, interests in like talking like uh, but he he also goes on to say like like ethereum's like dead as fuck basically um and everything else is just meme coins and i think this is where we're at like right now is that like and i do think it's 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 shit coins are getting wrecked like the, the 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 there is the real hopium is that people are seeing that there is basically bitcoin and gambling and that's it like i i think that's increasingly obvious for for people
Mm. Don't forget the other major uh, vertical of Bitcoin, which are Bitcoin conferences. The other yeah, there are already a few ways to make to money in, in, in Bitcoin, <laughs> and that's uh, mining, conferences, and uh, being NVK. Um... And, uh, and running uh, Pleb Underground. No, nope. I mean, I, I don't know. Right? We, we, we may have sponsors, we but wish. believe me, we do not make money. <laughs> aren't you one, you're one of the main funders of uh, TabConf, aren't you? Oh, you're yeah. You're putting Phil up as the liaison to look for more VC money for the. Uh, that's right. We're, we're going to get you in contact with our contacts. <laughs> Phil's got more like WC money like, than VC money, but each of their own. It's all going wrong. <laughs> Piss on you, money. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, guys. Anyways, that does it for us this week on Pleb Underground. Uh, don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, that's right, you can use Lightning and you can stream us sats using Fountain.fm, even though we can't seem to connect our Noster profile. Yes, that's right. We've reached out to Fountain and asked them to help us, and we haven't gotten any help yet. So you're getting shamed. <laughs> Anyways, so yes, but if you do want to stream us at Fountain.fm and Walton. Now the support's going to hate us, Phil. Yeah. Like, you're never going to get it fixed. All right. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Fuck them. Fuck you. Fuck shit, coins. We love fuck you. Us too. See you next week. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but go to Tabcomp and Bitcoin Plus Plus and, uh, and go to everything. Like, support stuff. Stop being everything. like losers on the internet. Go to Bitcoin stuff. Thank you. He means a loser like me. Peace.